Josh and I'm Phoebe. We're both in our mid twenties and 10 weeks ago, we started cruising full time. We made this little YouTube channel to share our journey with our friends and family and to hopefully inspire others just as we've been inspired to take chances on scary things like selling everything you own to go sailing with zero sailing experience. So far, we are absolutely besotted with this life and don't have any plans of doing anything else for the foreseeable future. So welcome aboard and for legal reasons, keep your life vest on. It's her first run around in a long time. There you go. Yay! <laughs> Looking very orange. So good. We collected some rubbish and got a complimentary table. Crazy <laughs> what happens. We're but thinking that this is going to go really, really well in our cockpit um, because we haven't got really any sort of table that we can have out in the cockpit and it makes the space very unhangable. Well, we do have a table in the cockpit, but it attaches to the helm, so it's not as and, it's not really stable. And we've never we've never confidently been able to use it because yeah. we're worried that it will fall down at any second. So this way we can try out the table and see if it's functional and works for free. And then if it's no good, we'll donate it. And if it's good, then we'll maybe get a better one when this one breaks down. But space-wise and weight, it's not ideal for us. But mm. if it makes the whole space a lot more functional, then it'll be worth it. Yeah, it'll give us a whole other area to hang out in, especially when we've got the canvas up, the wings up. Well, first good sign is that it's still here, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Is, is that what? Are they fish? fish? School Whoa. of fish. Oh, we got yes. we got one crab. Big one too. Female or male? I we'll have to flip it underneath and have a look. Oh, Male. Male. Yeah. I reckon that's legal size too. Wow. You Broke the can open, Jesus Christ. Oh baby, what's your foot? Yeah, he did, didn't he? Got all the food out of there. You deserve it. Point number two. And three. Oh, there's two attached to this boy, is there? Yeah. Oh, dog food! Yeah! Are you kidding me? Oh. Oh well. We've got one. We've got one. <laughs> Not even, he's not even moving. It's just like he's accepted his fate. No, he's wedged up in it. Oh. Make it as hard as possible. There's still hope, buddy. We gotta measure you first. I'll be gentle. Whoa. Oh my god. Cowboy says, grab him by the swimmer legs. Cowboy, help! He's not letting go. It's because he threw him around. Do you want to try and measure him from that? Oh no. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. His leg. What, it, what happened? His leg. Oh. Can they go back for his legs or just the paws? Oh, I'm not too sure. Okay. What did they say they did? 17 centimeters. Is that what size they said that they kept them? Yeah. At 17 centimeters. What's he? Um. 17, yeah. He's 17 centimetres. Yeah. Look at all the dog food in the tender. Yeah. That's not the square. Yeah, there's dog food in the tender. Yeah. <laughs> Vegan's nightmare! Oh, this is so horrible. Oh, yuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Note to self, take the dog food out before you thrash it around everywhere. Put that um, next to Whoa, whoa. Okay. Dangerous part. <laughs> <gasps> Let go! This is so horrible. I don't really want to be here. Now we can have a proper look at you. Sorry about your legs. Wow. A mud crab? Is that what this is, babe? Yeah. Wow, you're so beautiful. Yes, you're very big and scary. You're doing a very good job at scaring me. I'm not even joking. 
definitely. You are scaring me. So low tide's at four o'clock and we're gonna try and carry the tide out to Inskip Point. It's 3.40, so we're kind of pushing it a little bit, but... What was that? No. <laughs> we're on day eight of trying to upload our video and we've had Josh's phone out here in the cockpit so he can get ultimate reception. It's been stuck on, uploaded, just needs to process. It's been stuck on that for the past three hours, so who knows, but... Um, I'm going to fill the boat up with water from all the jerry cans and the shower, um, the sun showers that we have. And then Josh is going to go to land, get some refill on diesel and fill up the water before we head to Inskip. No, I haven't been, I haven't picked it up. Male? Yeah, that's a male. Yeah, because the breastplate of the female is wider. No, it's all about this. Yeah, well that's, that's what I mean, that's the... Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay, let me get the phone. Yeah, it's definitely a male. Oh, Why do you say that? Sorry, mate. Um, because it's a pointier breastplate, I guess. The breastplate, is that what it would be? Anyways, it's it's pointier. This is cool. That's epic. Yay! Oh my god. Backgammon for days. A little bit wobbly, how stable is it? No, it's stable, but I'm just wondering if it can go higher. This is higher steady. That's great! That's perfect for me anyway. <laughs> Are you sure? Um, it's definitely a male. Unfortunately for him. What about its sexual organs? Have you opened the floor? No, but we filled up the pillow this morning. So we're getting pretty low in power. It'll be a dark dinner reveal. But we've just cooked I can up. I the torch for you. Or okay. You'd like it dark and on the. Yeah. If do you want to torch up the food. You can't see anything. So, Josh just cooked up that crab um, that he caught this afternoon on the barbie. Brown rice. We've got an Asian salad with like a Thai, Thai beef dressing, but no beef, obviously. Got that Thai basil at. Where were we? I don't know. You got that from Yurith Wags. I've, oh, in Brisbane, in West End. <laughs> In West End, I found the Thai basil. <laughs> and we are eating it tonight. Salt and pepper tofu, obviously, um, to balance out the crab. <laughs> and then I've made a not not one to flex, but this sauce. This sauce is. This sauce is insane. It's a ginger, garlic, black pepper sauce. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Shalota. It's very, very spicy. I think that's how it's gonna... Well done. Thanks yeah. for cooking dinner. Sorry that it's kind of a bit simple tonight, but... I know, it's a bit basic, but I'm sure you'll survive. <laughs> Luckily we don't Lacking eat meals like this every sauce. night. <laughs> we actually do pretty much every night. <laughs> that's really good here. <laughs> should try it. Bon appetit. Bon up the queef. Oh. <laughs> so I gave up on my crab. Gave Josh the crab legs. Oh, didn't give me the claw though. Nah. This is a restaurant quality meal. This is like, this is knock your socks off at a restaurant. It's insane. <laughs> it's so incredible. It's so lucky. We've also made a decision that there's going to be no more slurping of crab in the. Um, no slurping in the saloon. No slurping in the saloon. Um, because <laughs> the crab juice goes everywhere. So now that we scored that table today, We'll be slurping out there, crabs out there. <laughs> but we're yeah. also not going to get crabs of this size or smaller in the no, future. Or no, this 17... Is, this was 17 centimetres, and we're... It's, yeah, I... Cowboy said 15's a legal size, but we, we, we only take 17. Yeah, Cowboy was a G. He said they only take 17, but... And we're going to stick to that too. Yeah, it's not like it, it was so tasty, but it's not really... It's not massively filling... And at the cost of a life, I think between we can... two of us, yeah, more than one fish would feed you. Yeah. Well, it was still tasty, super yummy. Didn't knock my socks off. However, the socks have a hole in them, so I say that's pretty damn good. Yay, yum. I got this balaclava from the op shop yesterday, and I love it. <laughs> I look like Cam the Frog, and I look like an idiot. <laughs> So we left our anchorage at Tin Camp Bay. We got a really light westerly wind, but we got the headsail up. 
on a beam reach and we've got Alan and Danielle ahead of us. They're leading the way in the cat, just on checking out the depth and for us. On their boat's called Cruise They're and called Hughes. They're called Cruise and Hughes. And uh, I woke up this morning, at, well, Phoebe woke up this morning to do some business on the head. Uh, what? That sounds really bad. <laughs> in the bathroom and um i couldn't go back to sleep because i went to sleep at 8 30 the night before so i was like oh I'll go check the crab pots because we're leaving early this morning and i might have a little bit of a fish oh my god i got nothing but i did see a huge shooting star as the sun was right as first light was happening and it was like a thick cobalt blue strip down the sky it was like it was one of the brightest shooting stars I've ever seen. Comets, we'll, whatever you want. We'll get better at that. That's something that I'm really looking forward to is learning about astronomy. I was going to say astrology, but I already know about that. Yeah. Learning, but anyway, learning about astronomy. Right now, we're sailing. We are. Well, we're, we're, motor, we're motor sailing. Motor sailing. I'm thinking about putting the main up. We definitely can, and we definitely should. Okay. Because you wanna, we've been motoring everywhere. Do you want to ensure that we're got everything stowed and then we'll do yes. that. Okay, yeah. see you soon. So the stack pack's unzipped all the way. Do you want to be at the helm or do you want... No, no, no. Okay. We'll just do a real quick one though. Hey. Okay, yeah. You ready? Ready about? Ready, keep on out there. Yeah. Alright, all right, raise it. Lazy Jacks. Okay, we're completely in irons at the moment. Yep. Oh, we still got that second reef in. Yeah. Dang. I can shake that out while we're going. Yep. Nearly three knots with the main and the head sailor. Pushing side too. Yeah. Just have the throttle back on there. Just give us a little bit of extra boot. Joshy's just taking the two reefs out of the main so we get a little bit more extra power. Do you want to explain uh, what a reef is or did we do that last time? I, I don't, I can't remember we if that. we, I think we did. On our last sail, did we? What was that? On our last sail, I think we did. Yeah. Or well, maybe we didn't. Reefing is a method used to reduce area of sail. The amount of sail area affects the vessel's stability and speed. The more area exposed to the wind, the more acceleration and healing, which can become dangerous if too excessive. Reefing is used to make a vessel safer and more manageable in strong winds. So we have been using a little bit of diesel. Um, yeah, we have been, that's just the way it is. So how our storage system works for the diesel in the boat is we have a day tank that gravity feeds our motor and then we have a holding tank down lower and that's almost at bilge level. Um, so we pump from the holding tank into the day tank and then it gravity feeds the motor. So our day tank's almost out of diesel now. So what I'm gonna do is pump from the holding tank into the day tank and I'm gonna show you how I do that. Our holding tank in the bilge is the bulk of our diesel storage. We transfer between the two using a priming bulb and inline pump. The only way to determine level of our day tank is by holding a torch against the tank. That's pumping right now from this magical spot just below our feet. That's all diesel tank below there. The fish and the birds are going mad. It's just going off here. Oh, look at them just there. Whoa, oh yeah, big tuna, oh wow, wow, there's so many fish here. So Inskip Point just down there, southern tip of Fraser, Wide Bay Bar entry, oh my god, wow, they are going off. I can't believe it, I've got a lure out but oh my lord, that is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Oh. And I still can't catch a fish. <laughs> so while we're sailing along at four knots, I'm taking the time to fix up the twisted braid that's on my trawling rod. Uh, I've been trying to untwist it for a couple of days now. <laughs> it's gonna get cut off. 
because it's just not working for me. That way I can put out a little smaller lure and as we sail up towards Gary's Anchorage. I'm gonna put some mono on. It's still got so much twist in it, it's crazy. But not as much as the other stuff. I was mad to try and get that twist out. There's no way it was ever gonna come out. This is how the braid ended up, it was so twisted. And that was because I was running two trawling lines and they got tangled in one another and then the swivel stopped being able to take the twist out of the lure that we were trawling. The braid just started twisting and twisting and twisting and twisting every time the lure was spinning. So as you can imagine, it's, this is like, this is probably 30 meters of line that's twisted into three meters. And I was thinking so much about, oh, what about, what about saving that 30 meters of braid? Well, then I've got 270 meters of braid that's unusable. So just, getting rid of a small percentage to make a large percentage usable. I'm going to attempt in front of you to do my first braid to mono join without visiting our friendly neighbor YouTube. Just can't remember whether the spin is supposed to be in the mono or the braid. No, it's in the braid. Bugger. I better, I better visit YouTube. So we're gonna drop the sails because we're going absolutely nowhere. We're not even pushing two knots at the moment. So we're going to drop the main, drop the head sail, and just chuck the motor on. Not happy about it. We're going to be motoring again. Yeah, we really wanted to be there, sailing. But now we just have absolutely no wind and we're just drifting with the tide. And Yeah, so anyway, that's the way it is. So we're going to put ah. the sails, <laughs> pack her all down, get going properly. This should be a motor vessel channel. Pull it taut, baby, back to the boat. Yep. It's a lot easier getting this main in a stack pack when there's no wind at all. Wow, this is our best one yet. Those lazy jacks are good, eh? They stop the sail from coming up. Yeah. And they don't make it any easier when it comes down. I am going to be reversing those things. That's my plan. There's not very much wind is when you don't even have to nose into the wind to get the sail down. <laughs> it is glass out conditions. Wow. So we're going to was... start the motor. Um, and then once we're motoring, I'll just come up here and tie all that sail off. And yeah. Make Such a shame that there's no wind because we'd be running with it right now. We were, yeah. Bit over us, over our aft. Oh, oh well, there's a jellyfish. Going faster than we are. Can we hitch a ride with you? I'm sad too because I'm editing down there and I really hate editing when the motor's on, but. I think we've edited more videos with the motor on than. Not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I have to save all of our voiceovers right until the end. Because <laughs> you can't record with the motor on. You will need masking tape, which we don't have, so we're using electrical tape. Acetone or rubbing alcohol. We only have rubbing alcohol. <laughs> Scissors, Stanley blade, rag that doesn't deposit fibers and actually wipes away things. And a name or a sticker of some kind. So, big name means big sticker. You know what they say about big stickers? They're hard to put on. <laughs> the technique that we were told by the lovely gentleman at Tweed, some sort of sign coast writing, anyway, told us is we'll do tape on either side, get it, get it lined up, and then you cut it down the middle and then tape in the middle as well. So then you can peel from the middle out. The middle outwards or what either side because otherwise it's too long to get yeah to get on um and then the idea with the edges is that you you tape over the edge like this which will show you but then you cut along that edge so then you can join those edges back up so then you get your straight line all the way across why don't you tie the off line oh on God. the starboard side <laughs> i will okay wow oh my sticker tape I reckon this is the most rural anchorage we've been in so far. It's like um, isolated. Yeah, just thing. so lush and desolate. <gasps> no! Oh. It's not sticky enough, did it fall no, it's in? No, just, I just, it's like I'm holding it like that. Okay, so I should do the other side then. Not 
not a lot, it only needs to come over like 20 mil. And I needs to come down a little bit. See how the corner of the M is in line with the corner of the transom? Three, four, five. Six, one, two, yeah, three, four. but the O's take up more yeah. space than the N's. I had the same thought. I was like, we well, could just have the R and the B in the middle, but so what? Measure the middle between I and M, not necessarily it being R and B, and then line it up with the width of the transom. The bikini did not last long. <laughs> it gets cold so early in the afternoon. It looks a little... Realistically, apparently, it's supposed to go that way. Yeah, it, that looks... If, Does if, that look true? Yeah, well, if that gland is supposed to be right in the middle... Yeah, where... The mark is a tiny bit right of centre. Well, let's just drift back again. <laughs> what? Oh, it's just so hard to tell. Yeah, we'll go for a little paddle. Does it make the boat look beamier to you? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Big old belly. I didn't really like the thickness of the font to begin with but now that it's on there it complements the navy stripe really yeah, well yeah, yeah, yeah. and i like that it's full because it's yeah. blooming like yeah. it's alive yeah. and vivacious i think it's as good as we'll get it without measurements Whoa. Alrighty. so now that we've got it all lined up the next step is to cut along this edge on the tape line because then when you put reapply the reapply it, you can just get that as your center as the same line. You just have to match the tape to the tape, right? Looks pretty good, eh? Yeah, I'm just looking at the corners of each. <sighs> Series of unfortunate events. Nothing unfortunate has happened yet. Should I tell the guy in the series of unfortunate events that his house almost fell into the water? It was her house, Aunt Josephine. No. No, no. Aunt Josephine owns the house. Count Olaf owns his house. Do you mean he owns the house that burned down? There's piranhas in the water. That's the most important thing. They're leeches. Okay, so I did it. We did it wrong last time because I forgot how to do it. But now I remember. So you peel. Wow. Well, you peel one section off. Leave that end stuck. Come over. Line your cut. Tape up and peel it from underneath. Here we go. That cable tie stuck to the B. Thank you. We get the wide angle shot for this one. I'll mute this part. <laughs> You're gonna have to, my darling. <laughs> I can't have everyone falling in love with me. <laughs> yeah! Oh it's official! Wow. wow. Now we can breathe and unclench our butt cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> I think we did pretty well too. <laughs> In our 10 weeks of sailing, this was the most beautiful anchorage that we'd seen so far. As we finally began to get into the gorgeous cruising grounds of Queensland that we'd heard so much about, we were even more excited to start capturing it on the drone. Rolling mountains, dense layers of eucalypt and paper bark, coloured land with a rich history. Gary's Anchorage, otherwise known as Gary's Camp, was named after a wiry and sharp-witted Batula man, Gary, obviously, who was renowned for his horse riding and tracking skills. He and his family had lived here around 1900, living solely off of the land. This spot is in a sheltered southwest facing bay, with the camping grounds providing ample protection from wind and uncomfortable weather. On a low tide, there's a sand flat exposed that roosting seabirds can gather and scream and eat and all of the other fun nonsense that they get up to. It was in this anchorage that Josh spotted a dingo marooned on a sandbank that over time had grown vegetation and microhabitats for birds, etc. But it seemed that the dingo couldn't get back to the island. Dingoes can be solitary creatures, but there is always strength in roaming with numbers. So this dingo was most likely a young male who had strayed from the pack in search of smaller prey, trotted over to this arm of island and then got stuck once the constant shifting sands of the Great Sandy Straits deemed it impossible to cross, unless you're a good swimmer. Which I don't know if dingoes are or not, I've never asked them. We often think and talk about this little dingo and hope that he made it home safely. 
take it from us, being alone for too long can make you a little bit of a weirdo. But thankfully, we're not alone right now. We have you and we're grateful that you're here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.